So now, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our speaker. Very, very happy to have um, Nicole Fuller, registered dietitian with the Valley Hospital, speaking to us on simple cooking tips for one or two. Welcome, Nicole. And thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so um, like Sue said, we're going to be talking today about some tips for cooking or one or two for cooking for one or two people. I'm Nicole Fuller, dietitian. I've been working as a dietitian, just a little bit about me, uh, for well over 20 years in a variety of different um, settings, hospitals, long-term care, um, doing community um, work, like presentations like this, um, dialysis, you know, you name it, I've probably done it. <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Oh, and I just will apologize if there's any background noise. Um, my neighbors are having some construction done and I'm at home doing this presentation. So I apologize if there's any loud noise in the background. So um, let's see. All right, here we go. So um, just briefly, I wanted to kind of go over the program goals or objectives or what we're going to um, talk about today. Um, you could see here, we're going to talk about what exactly is a healthy plate, because that's basically the foundation on which we can create meals or think about what we're going to um, be eating to maximize our health. Because uh, that's important no matter if we're cooking for one person or an entire family. Um, cooking is healthier, meaning cooking um, for yourself at home is healthier than uh, going out to eat. We'll talk a little bit about that. What, How you could stock your kitchen, refrigerator, pantry, all that um, good stuff to have at home to make easy meals, what to equip your ki kitchen with, some healthy cooking methods, meal ideas, and um, that kind of stuff. So let's get started. Okay, so when I was talking about um, how to create a healthy plate, this is what I'm talking about. This is kind of a roadmap for choosing foods, okay? So if you were to take your plate and divide it into quarters, half your plate will be fruits and vegetables, a quarter of your plate will be grains, or I just like to say complex carbohydrates, meaning, because it just doesn't have to be rice, which is a grain, or barley, which is a grain. It could be um, pasta or potatoes. So your complex carbohydrate um, bread would go in the grains category too. Um, and you also want to include protein. And if you don't have it with your meal, um, you can have dairy, you know, low fat, fat free dairy products. So this is the basis of how we want to create our meals when we are cooking for one or two people. So when I said cooking is healthier, um, that's because when you cook for yourself at home, you are 100% in charge of the foods that you are buying, number one, the foods that you're cooking and the foods that you're serving, right? Um, when you go out to eat, you give up that control. Um, you, yes, you are ordering from the menu, but you don't know exactly how they're preparing it, right? You don't know exactly what's in the sauces that they're providing with you. So when you're at home, you're making a meal for yourself or another person, um, you are in charge. Um, you're able to plan your meals ahead. You can create a shopping list um, of healthy foods to purchase. Uh, you're able to read the food labels to make sure that they're exactly the foods that you want to be eating. Um, you're able to use healthier ingredients, choose your ingredients. You know, you're, you're, you're cooking from what you have in your home um, and you're better able to control your portion sizes when you're eating from home rather than when you go to a restaurant. So cooking number one is healthier. So, and which is why you're here to learn about cooking for one or two people. So you come to the right place. Um, number, <clears throat> we're going to talk about what to have on hand to be able to um, cook healthy meals you know, sometimes when you're at home and you, let's face it, we don't always plan ahead, but having some things on hand, it's easy to put together a quick, easy meal. 
Um, some things that you might want to have in your pantry would be some kind of low sodium broths, whether it's vegetable broth, beef broth, chicken broth, um, beans, whether it's canned or dried beans. And if it's canned, try and choose the low sodium ones, low sodium canned tomatoes, as well as um, tomato sauce or spaghetti sauce are good. You could have jams and jellies. Of course, once they're open, then they go in the refrigerator olives, same sort of thing. Having a canned fish or canned chicken for that um, extra protein that you can add to a meal is great too. Things like pastas and um, grains like brown rice, quinoa, couscous, those are things to have on hand as your, you know, as part of the grain. Again, think about the meal and how we want it to kind of be broken down. Having those grains on hand, um, obviously spices, breadcrumbs are one. So you could see having some of these things on hand, you can, knowing that you have these, you can come up with a healthy meal without having to really plan too far ahead. What should you have in your freezer? So sometimes people don't realize what can be frozen. So having, and people don't realize frozen vegetables. And when you're, you know, either one person or two or two people, Sometimes you don't want to buy a lot of fresh um, produce because you think it might go bad before you can use it. Frozen vegetables, and some people are surprised at this, frozen vegetables are 100% healthy. They're picked at the peak of ripeness. So sometimes they can even be healthier or more nutritious than um, fresh produce. So having frozen vegetables in a bag in your freezer that you are able to have vegetables with just about every meal if you have those available. And um, it's convenient, it's easy, you can microwave them, you can cook them on the stove. So it's easy, convenient. And you don't have to use the whole bag. So if you're one person, you can portion out um, a serving onto a plate and either heat it up in the microwave or on the stove top. Um, having frozen meats, and when I see meat, I'm talking um, chicken, um, turkey, lean ground beef. And, and when I'm talking, when I say lean ground beef, I prefer the 93% lean um, ground beef. You can also just do um, steaks if you would like, lean steaks, center cut pork chops, and again, fish, seafood, all frozen. And when you buy a huge package, you know, say you want to buy in bulk at the grocery store, you bring it home, you individually freeze them, right? So that when you go to thaw it, you have your portion there already. Okay. So don't be afraid to buy a little bit in bulk, especially if it's on sale, that's a good cost saving measure. And then you um, individually portion it out, put it in your freezer and it's ready to go. Um, and a little tip, I would recommend writing on whatever, however you uh, freeze it, writing on the there the date that you froze it, and sometimes if you're not sure what it is, you know, a month or a couple months down the road, write what it is that is frozen. And some people don't know this, but you can also freeze whole grain breads or bread in general, roll, rolls, um, tortillas, flatbreads. You can freeze all that. So, you know, if you're one or two people and you're worried about waste buying, you know, because a lot of those things come, especially tortillas, 10 in a pack, 12 in a pack, and you might not use that many, but you can freeze them. So um, don't worry about saving, you know, having to throw away extra because it can be frozen. So those are some things I recommend having on hand in your freezer. What should we have in our refrigerator? Um, I put leafy greens because you can easily make a salad, a side salad, because again, we're thinking about the plate. How are we going to incorporate more vegetables into our diet? Even as one or two people, having a small container of leafy greens is a great way. Um, lemons, limes, or just having the container of the lime juice or lemon juice. Um, fresh herbs, if you use them, vegetables, produce, and we will um, actually talk about some produce that lasts longer, which might be better for um, one or two people to have on hand. Eggs are very convenient. Having some kind of milk, uh, low fat or um, fat-free or 1% would be my recommendation. 
So you could see these are just some things that you should have on hand because you can incorporate them into an easy, quick meal for one or two people um, without having to really plan too far ahead. Okay, some nut butters, whether it's almond butter or peanut butter. Um, and this is in the section for refrigerator because when it comes to nut butters, whether it's almond butter or peanut butter, I always recommending the, recommend the ones that you have to stir and keep refrigerated because they don't have um, as many additives like Skippy or Jif tend to add um, sugar to their peanut butters. So using more of a natural peanut butter or almond butter is my recommendation. And okay, so when it comes to produce here, as I mentioned, um, here are some examples of produce that will last a week or more. So if you prefer fresh vegetables over frozen for taste or whatever, um, these are some that you might want to try because they will last, tend to last longer. Um, you know, apples are one that can last well over a week. Beets, cabbage, um, carrots tend to last a very long time. Celery, again, you could see these examples, kale, some other leafy green vegetables tend to last longer um, than a week as well. As a matter of fact, I just uh, bought a container two weeks ago of uh, leafy greens, you know, in the plastic container. I took it out actually and put it in my own Tupperware because I like to add some onions to it. I put it in the refrigerator and yesterday, so actually it was been a week and a half, it was still fresh um, and I was able to use it. So some things do last a longer time. Um, also, what you can do is if you are afraid of something going bad, you can prepare it ahead of time. So say squash, for instance, um, if you buy an acorn squash or a butternut squash, um, you can roast it, like say, you know, cut it up, put some onions, garlic, how, or other vegetables you can add to it, roast it in the oven, take it out and put it in um a Tupperware container and you can use it over several meals, right? Um, and this would be good for someone that's one or two people because you can use it several days in a row, even though you've made a lot ahead of time. What else do you want to do? You want to make sure that your kitchen is equipped with equipment that you can use for cooking for one or two people. Microwave, this is something um, you know, a lot of people ask me, is microwaving um, bad? It, it's a very convenient way for heating up foods, especially um, frozen vegetables, or if you um, have frozen protein that you want to use that day, you can defrost it in the microwave a quick and easy way. You want to make sure you have pots and pans like this, a nonstick skillet. It could even be one pot or one pan if you don't have a lot of room wherever you're living. And I was talking about this with my husband, a toaster oven. You sometimes don't even need a stove to cook a meal. You could just have a toaster oven. A toaster oven is great because you can toast bread, um, you know, obviously, but you can cook chicken in it. You can cook fish in it. You could cook a pork, you know, piece of pork. These, it is a great tool because there are so many things that you could do with it. And nowadays you could even get an air fryer. That's an air fryer, a toaster oven, and like a mini oven. So, and it's, it's not like you even have to use your stove. So it's very easy, convenient. And a crock pot might be something that is worth um, looking into too, investing in, because you can make batch meals in there, which you can then separate into individual containers and freeze and use for a later date. Okay, so cook less. What do I mean by cook less for one or two? So if you're someone that prefers to um, look at a recipe um, and <clears throat> if it says cook, you know, servings for four, you can't, you don't have to make all four. You can reduce the recipe by half or even to a quarter. Um, and that way it's just for one person or for two people, depending on what the recipe, you know, the serving size is. So you can cook less. And I find a lot of times people don't want to do this because they're not really sure how to take the recipe and um, cut it by half or a quarter. So I found this, the next slide I'm gonna show you is how to cut down recipes. 
Um, if you want to get out your phone and take a picture of this, or if you have a camera nearby and you want to take a picture of this, this is a great tool on how to cut down recipes. So you could see here, this has, you know, the original recipe. If it calls for a cup, what's half of that amount or what's a third of that amount? Um, the uh, website I got this off of was Taste of Home. So you could actually, um, if you don't want to a screenshot this, you could go to tasteofhome.com and put in the search engine, how to cut down recipes. And this should come up in the Taste of Home website. Because how do you cut down a half a teaspoon to a third of the amount, you know, or a quarter of a cup down to a third of the amount? Um, I find a lot of times people want to don't want to make the recipe because they don't want to do the math. And I totally get that. But this is a way that you can do that with something as simple as this. Um, if you don't want to cook less, you can continue to make the full recipe. So you're cooking for, you, you know, you're cooking for one or two people and you're looking at some recipes and it says, you know, serves six. Go ahead and cook the full recipe. What you can do, as I mentioned before, a lot of times, um, you know, you can make a a wonderful crock pot um, soup or stew. And it serves, I don't know, sometimes it'll say eight to 10 people. Freeze, you know, make the entire thing. Say you're cooking for two people that night, you serve the amount for two people and you freeze the rest in batches. Um, kind of like this image um, depicts here. Uh, they have separated it into four containers. And then you want to carefully label and date what you are freezing and use what you're frozen at for the next week or the following week or maybe the next month. Okay, so this is a great way um, to use extra batches or you can plan to use the leftovers, whatever you have left as planned overs. So if you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna make this beef stew tonight or this ch turkey chili, and we're going to eat this tonight, but in two days from now, we're going to have planned overs. This is what we're going to eat a couple nights from now. You can always do that. So don't be afraid to try new things, knowing that you'll have extra because you can always do something with the extra, even if you're only cooking for one or two people. And I also wanted to talk about frozen meals because they are convenient. They are easy, especially if you're only one person. And I think a lot of people wonder what kind of frozen meal should I be eating or looking for, or what is healthy, what is not healthy. So I've kind of broken it down into things that you should look at, especially at a food label. Um, when it comes to frozen meals, look at those nutrition facts labels. You want to kind of stick to something that has about 10 to 18 grams of fat. A lot of times the people will say, what about the saturated fat? Because saturated fat is been shown to be the worst kind of fat for us. I would try and stick to something that has less than four grams of saturated fat per serving. Now, when it comes to the calories, between three and 500 calories per meal or, you know, per, not per serving, like say if it's 250 calories per serving and there's two servings in the container, that's 500 calories, that's fine. Somewhere between three, between three to 500 calories. Sodium, that can be tricky because a lot of times when we um, look at frozen meals, the sodium content tend to, tends to be higher because it's a little more processed. So you kind of want to try and stick to something that has less than 600 milligrams of sodium um, in the amount that you're going to be eating okay, again. So look at the nutrition facts label, look at the um, serving size. So if it's serving size is you know half the container, and it says 300 milligrams of sodium per serving, that's for only half. If you eat the whole thing, that's double the amount, it would be about 600 milligrams of sodium. 10 to 20 grams of protein is a, a, a good mix, um, a good um, range to look for. And when it comes down to it, if it is too confusing to think about, what you wanna look for is balance. Remember, going back to that slide, let me show you. Going back to this slide, the my plate slide, it comes down to balance. A lot of times the frozen meals won't have won't have fruit, right? 
but you want to look for vegetables. You want vegetables to be in included in the frozen meal. You want there to be protein in the meal, whether it's a plant-based protein or um, a meat-based protein, you want protein in there. And you also want some kind of grain or starch, okay? So let me get back to the frozen meals. Oops, the frozen meals slide. Let me get there, I apologize. Now I gotta find it. Here we, here we go, frozen meals. So again, balance, you want the carbohydrate, you want the vegetable and you want the protein and whole foods for the win. So carbohydrate, vegetable, protein for the win. And some good choices are here. Like I have here, healthy choice. Um, you can look for that's an, a decent brand. Um, Kashi also sells frozen meals, lean cuisine, um, those types of uh, frozen entrees would be the ones you'd want to look for. When it comes to what kind of cooking methods should you be using? Then this you can incorporate for any, you know, whether it's one person, two, two people, or a family, you want to choose healthier cooking methods because it cuts down on fat and calories, especially. So you want to look for, um, and if you're looking for recipes, or even if you know how to make something, you would, the preferred methods of cooking are baking, broiling, steaming, grilling, stir frying, and lightly sauteing. So essentially you want to avoid recipes that use frying as um, a method or deep frying, okay? Um, pan fried as well. So if you're essentially coating something in breading and frying it, those are the methods you kind of want to avoid for fat and calories reasons. Okay. Um, so something that you could do, prepare one dish or one pot meals. Um, for cooking for yourself, this might be make more sense because not only is it easy to make something um, for yourself this way, but you're cutting down on the amount of dishes you're using, right? If you're cooking for one or two people, you don't want to, you know, sometimes you don't want to use these elaborate recipes where you're using tons of plates and, and the, the um, pots and pans and all that stuff. So some one pot or dish meals would be like soups, stews, or calor or, or casseroles. Okay. Um, again, you could either take the recipe and cut it down, you know, to a half, or you can make the full recipe and save the rest as leftovers or planned overs. You want to make thinking about making life easier for yourself. Keeping, keeping it simple. Each meal, and I will kind of keep on reiterating this um, concept, each meal you want to look for a whole grain or complex carbohydrate. Whole grain meaning brown rice, um, wheat pasta, uh, baked potato, um, baked sweet potato. It could be quinoa, couscous. Those are all whole grains or complex carbohydrates. Lean protein, chicken breast, uh, fish or seafood, lean beef, uh, pork tenderloin or uh, center cut pork chop, the, uh, beans count as protein, tofu, tempeh, so some kind of protein and vegetable or fruit or both at the meal, okay? We wanna keep it simple. If you want more ideas, you can always, a great resource is choosemyplate.gov. Um, it will kind of even give you more examples of how to uh, create this sort of plate to make sure you're getting the vitamins, minerals, fiber, protein, all that you need. And it also has recipes available. So I did also want to go through some breakfast, lunch, and dinner ideas for one or two people. Um, easy right off the bat oatmeal. Um, I prefer or recommend using... Um, not uh, the single serving packs of oatmeal. You can certainly do that, but you can buy a big container of oatmeal and just make a serving enough for one person, right? That would be your whole grains. How can you make it more of a meal? Um, you could add a lot of times what I do is I add a tablespoon um, of peanut butter and get my protein in there. And then I add some berries as my fruit. So I have a little bit of protein. I have berries and um 
I have my whole grain, which is the oats. You can look for whole grain cereals, um, and then you use your 1% or skim milk, or you can do even, you sometimes you can even take your whole grain cereal and add it to yogurt and yogurt would be the protein, right? So, so Greek yogurt here in this picture, we have Greek yogurt with some fruit and um, dried cranberries on top. So you're getting the fruit and you're getting protein from the uh, yogurt. And maybe you can even do a slice of whole wheat bread on the side, which would be your complex carbohydrate. Um, eggs are also something that is great to do because of the protein. So you could say, if you're concerned about the yolks, you could always do egg whites. So this picture here on the bottom right-hand corner is showing um, sort of um, eggs with vegetables. So you're getting eggs and vegetables, a little bit of fruit and whole grains with the whole wheat bread right here, right? So you kind of want to Think about the my plate and how we can make sure we're getting our protein, whole grains, and some fruit in there. And this oatmeal on the bottom, actually, for the protein here, it's oatmeal and some seeds like pumpkin seeds that you can add to it, a little bit of coconut flakes, and maybe some craisins as well for some sweet sweetness. And if you're in a rush, you, you know, you're by yourself whole grain toast with some peanut butter and maybe a piece of fruit and you're good to go. Again, the peanut butter is your protein, the whole grain toast is your complex carbohydrate and a piece of fruit. Some lunch ideas. Leftovers is always a great idea, right? So if you're cooking and you have uh, multiple servings, there you go, right off the bat. Salad is another great way. Again, we want to try and make sure we're getting vegetables at every lunch and dinner. So you could do a salad here. There's a picture of a salad. Um, it has some beans on there, tomatoes, other vegetables, and some chicken on top for the protein. Beans also count as protein. So if you had a can of beans at home and you had some lettuce and maybe some other vegetables like tomatoes, maybe some avocado, you could throw beans on top and that would be your, your protein. Maybe you even want to put um, like a quarter cup of cheese on top and get a little bit of extra um, protein as well as calcium from the cheese. Low fat cottage cheese. A lot of people I recommend um, cottage cheese to, or we talk about cottage cheese because it has protein as well as calcium and vitamin D. Um, I don't get a lot of great feedback from cottage cheese, but you can definitely do that as um, a protein. And here you can even see they did um, uh, some cottage cheese with some beans and tomatoes and walnuts and straw and, and berries. So you can kind of do something like this. Again, homemade soups you can use from the night before. What about a sandwich? There's a picture here, some whole wheat bread, that would be your complex carbohydrate, some lean turkey, um, low salt turkey breast, and maybe low sodium cheese, and lettuce and tomato with maybe a little side salad or some frozen vegetables that you've heated up. And then you have a complete meal for lunch. Some dinner ideas. Think about a protein, chicken, fish, or other lean meat, or maybe even like this picture has um, tempeh, which is a plant-based protein, um, you could, or you could do beans or tofu. So you got your protein. You could bake, broil it, grill it, stir fry it, um, and then you're going to have your vegetables. So it could be frozen vegetables or a salad, or maybe you have some, you know, you buy one broccoli crown, you cook it for one day, you save half for dinner and have the other part you're going to eat for lunch the next day, right? So you've got your, your protein, you've got your vegetables, and maybe you want to, they sell the individual um, Minute Maid rice. You could do the brown rice um, microwavable one serving, right? Easy to go. So you've got your whole grain, your protein, your vegetable. Um, this picture up at the top right-hand corner shows you some um, baked fish with brown rice and some vegetables, or you maybe you want to do um, a pita, whole wheat pita pizza. So you buy some whole wheat pitas. You could put um, either this one. I thought this was a great idea. This pita has, is kind of like a pita pizza, but it's got hummus with some feta cheese and vegetables on top. So the hummus would be your protein because it's made out of chickpeas and bean, 
chickpeas or beans, which are protein. So this is a great idea. Or maybe you want to put some spaghetti sauce on some vegetables and some shredded mozzarella and bake it in the oven. Okay. Um, so you always want to kind of just think of having that complex carbohydrate, whether it's rice, brown rice, wheat, pasta, um, quinoa, couscous, potatoes. You want to have your protein, which can also be plant protein, and you want to have your vegetables. These, again, if you want to write these down or take a screenshot, these are some great helpful cooking websites, especially the One Dish Kitchen. That literally has recipes that are broken down to one you can you make that one recipe for one person. So this is a great wes, um, website, but eating well, meals for you, allrecipes.com, cooking light, taste of home. These are great resources. Also, I should have put on there myplate.gov just so you can get an idea of the concept of how to balance your plate correctly. And I think that once you understand balancing your plate, it's easier to start cooking for one or two people. And don't be afraid to do some grab and go. You know, it can be a little bit more costly, but you can go to salad bars and a lot of times they already have, um, you know, obviously they have the vegetables there, but a lot of times they have cooked grains, some that you may have, ne have never tried before, like bulgur or barley or farro or some grains that they might have at the salad bar. And they will oftentimes have a protein already cooked so you can get one or more meals there. Buy a rotisserie chicken and break it down and you can use it for several meals or you can take it and make some low fat chicken salad or you can make chicken soup and then freeze some, any leftovers or so rotisserie chicken is a great way to do things. You can also go um, a lot of times, in, not a lot of times, Purdue chicken, uh, Purdue has, um, it's called, I think it's called carvings. They have different types of um, chicken already cooked, grilled that comes in a bag. So you can portion it out and use it up to three to four days. And pre-cooked grains, like here at Trader Joe's, I know that they have pre-cooked lentils that you can, um, you know, open, put in a Tupperware and spread it out over several days. So you already have a grain that's cooked for you. Um, you want to, again, stick with healthier choices, steamed, broiled, grilled, baked. Those are all good, healthy um, cooking methods. Always go for veggies and or salad, having some kind of whole grain with your meals, baked potatoes over mashed. And if, especially if you're going out to eat, you know, you want to try and stay away from sauces and gravings and dressings or have them on the side. Even when you're cooking at home, having those things on the side so you have more control over what you're putting on it. So last but not least, I'm going to um, leave you with some tips. You know, be creative. Try one or more recipes. You know, start out with trying one recipe a week. Maybe um, go back to the um, One Dish Kitchen, look at some of their recipes, try one of their recipes each week. Each week, think of the food groups that we talked about, you know, the protein, vegetables, fruit, whole grains, and low fat dairy. Think of those food groups for meals as well as for snacks. Plan ahead so that you, you know what you're going to be eating. Have your pantries, your pantry with um, the stocked with the things that we talked about, as well as your freezer and your refrigerator. You can always just leave the junk out. You know, don't stock your pantry or your freezer or your fridge with junk that is, you know, is not that healthy for you. Um, sometimes it's helpful to meal prep on a weekend or um, pick a certain day of the week that works for you, meal prep ahead. Um, reserve eating out or ordering into one to two times a week, because remember, cooking is the healthier option, even if it's just for one or two people. Remember, freeze things. Don't be afraid to you know, cook more, freeze things, and just label it carefully with the date and what it is you have frozen. You are the ones that you are in charge of what you are purchasing, what you're cooking and what you are eating. So choosing healthy ingredients to make healthy meals will overall lend itself to a healthier lifestyle. 
And now I'm just going to open it up to any questions anyone might have, and maybe there are none, which means I've just done my job. <laughs> You have done a wonderful job. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nicole. That was just, you touched on everything that I think we could, we would need to know. Um, one person wrote, uh, so glad you mentioned the toaster oven. We'd be dead without ours. And many people don't think about it as such a valuable resource. And isn't that the truth, especially when you're cooking for just one or two people? Mm -hmm. it's, it's really a great idea. It seems less daunting if you're, especially if you're not even a cooker, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just a comment on just, you know, um, the frozen meals. And it's so true. I think the the sodium is is the, the trick on that one, you know, so just to make sure. Um, somebody was asking how long, how long can stuff stay in the freezer? It depends on, on, on the stuff. Right. Um, the, your best bet would be honestly to, to Google it, to see okay. how long something is good for it. That's usually what I do. Great idea. Um, can you put the screen? Oh, can you put the website? Um, yeah, this the helpful, yes, website. Yes, the helpful yes. website slide up. Thank you. Um, what is a good resource for plant-based meals? I guess. For those who don't eat meat. So um, plant-based meals, there's actually a really good website called Meatless Mondays. So it's meatless mon it's either meatlessmonday.com or meatlessmondays.com. Um, it is, and it's not just about Monday. It's just uh it's just that the campaign started as Meatless Monday, but it has good ideas for um plant-based recipes. Delicious, yeah. Um, I love that their ideas for for protein too, which is, we know is so important for health. Uh, someone said, I use green giant veggies a lot. How healthy and safe is it to microwave frozen veggies in a plastic pouch? Hmm. I've honestly never looked into that. I do it quite often. If it says steam in the bag, I steam it in, in the bag. Um, I would have, I honestly, I'm, I'm assuming they're wondering because the plastic and the cooking, plastic, yeah. if you're worried about that, I would, a lot of times if I'm cooking for, you know, just one of my children, I will take a microwave safe dish, portion out what they will be eating. And I just add a little water and seasoning and I put it in the microwave and cook it like that. So if you're worried, I would take it out of the bag and put it in a microwave safe dish and do it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, what type of oatmeal is best for someone with high LDLs? Any suggestions? Um, a, a, any oatmeal, really. I mean, I would do like the, the Quaker old fashioned oatmeal. Um, I would recommend doing the, not the instant oatmeal, doing more the, the, um, the whole oatmeal, but any brand really, you could even do the steel cut oatmeals. I, I would, however, stay away, I, just do the plain, not with the, the stuff in it. added and all that sweetener stuff. Well, and can I ask why the instant versus, is it more processed, the instant oatmeal? Yes, more okay. processed. Okay. Um, someone said, I never like eating before noon. Is skipping breakfast so bad? Well, it depends on the person um, and what your goals are, is it you just don't like eating breakfast? Then it's fine. If you're a diabetic, not so fine. Um, it, there's, it's hard to answer not knowing the person in the situation. Are they doing it for weight loss? It, then it could be helpful. Sometimes it's not helpful. I know that's not really a right right answer but it's not a one size fits all right it's individual if you're yes. like if you're tilling a field or you're a farmer breakfast is probably indicated <laughs> yes we're doing a lot of exits sure well someone else says thank you uh this was wonderful so so much information i got a lot uh out of it i'm sure everyone else did too it sounds like it